We all probably know the Dream Chaser space plane is the loser to Dragon and Starliner and NASA's commercial crew program in 2014 to send crews to orbit via private companies. It was a really big fall for the company after more than five years of pursuing this contract. Nonetheless, Sierra Space, or SNC, persevered, eventually reestablishing and strengthening their relationship of trust with NASA. So, what makes them believe in NASA's future? This is the real reason NASA and SNC are developing the Dream Chaser space plane. The space shuttle was the face of NASA to most of the world for 30 years before it was finally retired in 2011. 20 or 50 or even 100 years from now, the shuttle will be remembered as an extremely useful vehicle and a technical marvel. So far, nothing can compare to its functional abilities, serving as a launch vehicle, cargo carrier, both up and down, human transporter, on-orbit living quarters, construction shack, space station builder, satellite launcher and retriever, satellite servicer, and research lab in itself. It was mostly reusable, entering the atmosphere like a spaceship, then transitioning to operation as an airplane and landing on a runway, with the crew walking away with dignity and relative comfort, and the entire final approach and landing viewable on live TV by millions around the world reminding U.S. citizens of America's technical and geopolitical leadership. Sadly, the space shuttle program proved that reusable space planes aren't exactly the foolproof best way to put humans and technology into space, and it was planned to be since the dog days of the Apollo program. With a total program cost of nearly $250 billion when adjusted for inflation, it'd be inaccurate to call the shuttle program cost-effective. Keep in mind, each space shuttle orbiter was originally intended to complete as many as 100 missions before the end of its life cycle. None of the six orbiters ever even came close to this figure. In spite of all the amazing science credited to the space shuttle, including the Hubble and Chandra space telescopes, the Ulysses Solar Probe, and 48 different trips to two different space stations, the cost is a blemish on an otherwise historic list of accomplishments. The last American space plane to complete a mission in orbit touched down at the Kennedy Space Center on July 21, 2011, when the space shuttle orbiter Atlantis came to a wheel stop at the end of the 15,000-foot or 4,572-meter long runway. It marked the end of an era for NASA. But thanks to Sierra Nevada and its now legally separate Sierra Space offshoot, the era of the reusable space plane is not in an end. If anything, it's probably only getting started. Although the company missed out on the 2014 contract award for NASA's commercial crew program, that isn't stopping the company from continuing to prepare for human missions aboard the launch vehicle. Of course, Dream Chaser can't do all that the original shuttle did, but it can perform the shuttle's single most important task of transporting crews and cargo to the ISS and returning them to a safe and dry landing on a runway in full view of the public. Compared to SpaceX, Dragon and Boeing Starliner's ISS are both capsules resembling those from Mercury, Gemini, and the Apollo programs of the 60s. Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo crews landing in capsules in the saltwater ocean were required to wait up to several hours until a rescue ship or helicopter arrived to pull them to safety. With all the unavoidable pitching and bobbing in the open ocean, more than half of the waiting astronauts got seasick. A capsule makes a poor boat. We almost lost astronaut Gus Grissom in a Mercury program landing, due primarily to difficult recovery operations in the open ocean. Reliable ground landing of a capsule using propulsion will be difficult with poor downward crew visibility and limited maneuvering capability. A capsule coming to Earth on parachutes will need to land in an unpopulated and relatively flat area of the U.S. Since the parachutes have little to no maneuvering ability, it'll be a challenge to reliably avoid hazards such as ravines, power lines, cabins, livestock, and barns. This needs to be done under normally windy conditions. Crews returning from orbit in a Russian Soyuz capsule landing in remote areas of Russia must wait sometimes hours until rescue people arrive. We've seen images on Russian TV of rescue personnel struggling to pull cosmonauts from a Soyuz capsule lying on its side. We then see rescue people placing them on stretchers for transport to recovery facilities. Experience with capsules landing on water or land has shown either method to have been relatively crude and unfriendly to crews and other operations personnel. 
Astronauts we've known would be willing to ride down on a parachute if that were the only way to get assigned to a mission, but astronauts and pilots also want to touch down on a runway if at all possible. Dream Chaser will perform better and have lower operating costs than either of the other capsule systems. Although those differences could be small compared with the advantage Dream Chaser would have in enabling a live TV coverage of their entire approach and landing of each flight. Besides, although only a quarter the length of the space shuttle, Dream Chaser has greater carrying capacity than the other spacecraft being used in NASA's commercial resupply program. Equipped with an expendable cargo module, it can carry six tons into low Earth orbit, enough to supply astronauts on the International Space Station for half a year. Almost all of that six tons is carried under pressurized conditions. It can also bring back two tons of cargo, including fragile science experiments, thanks to its modest gravity loading on re-entry and landing. There's space on board for up to seven astronauts. The versatility is one of the other outstanding features of Dream Chaser. All the aforementioned features contribute to making Dream Chaser by far the most versatile spacecraft that NASA is currently funding. Not only can it carry cargo and or crew, but it can accomplish an array of missions ranging from microgravity experiments to remote sensing to servicing deployed satellites. It potentially can be used for both civil and military missions and with the addition of radiation hardening can be utilized in higher orbits. It also can be lofted into orbit on a variety of launch vehicles, including human rated rockets if a decision is made to use it for astronaut transportation. SNC executives are careful not to get ahead of themselves when discussing all the ways Dream Chaser might one day be used. After all, it won't perform its first cargo mission until 2021, and only six of those are guaranteed under the present resupply contract. However, the company's website describes Dream Chaser's capabilities in terms that suggest carrying cargo to the space station could be just the beginning. If SNC's past history is any indication, this is only the first chapter in the Dream Chaser saga. The U.S.'s space agency isn't the only one interested in this SUV. The United Nations and the European Space Agency, among others, are investigating its use for other future missions. That's because the Dream Chaser offers relatively affordable, relatively ready-made access to space for astronauts, experiments, and stuff. Plus, it can return not just to Earth or Earth space centers, but to Earth's airports. For the U.S. military, it'd be able to transport cargo within three hours. It'd mean less weight and travel time for supplies and equipment for the U.S. military to be delivered to crews in low Earth orbits. The SNC Dream Chaser spacecraft could also bring military personnel to space, and it opens up the opportunity for commercial space travel in the future, should the craft prove successful. The U.S. Air Force has shown their interest in space vehicles to supplement traditional air, land, and surface transportation modes. These space vehicles could also support non-combat activities such as humanitarian relief operations and medical missions. The first official Dream Chaser launch date is set for 2024. All the best for this dream. And that's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below because your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and we hope to see you next time. Bye.